Hey, what's up, everybody? It is your girl JoJo, and I'm here with the review for Family Empire Houston. I want to say this might be episode eight or nine. I hope you guys are doing good today. I am doing well. Um, look, y'all almost didn't get this video. It was trying times for me. Uh, <laughs> y'all, I was in here boohooing this morning. I actually watched the episode early this morning. Um, I was on my way to work out and, um, I was crying. Like I just, I really couldn't get it together. I was extremely emotional and I'm gonna try to keep it together for the review. But, um, this was a tough episode to watch, but it was very real. And I want to applaud the Bradens for putting their family out here like this because it, it was, it was real. You know, it wasn't a, I actually haven't heard anybody saying, oh, this is why, you know, why can't we ever have positive black shows? I haven't heard anybody say anything like that. And I think that's because it's not really, even though this was a negative event, the show itself is extremely positive and extremely real. These are things that happen within families and family dynamics, especially when you have a tendency to sweep things under the rug and I'm currently going through some own stuff in my family and I just know that when you sit on things for years and years or when you're feeling resentful about stuff and you don't say anything and then everybody's feeling resentful and they don't say anything it can turn into really nasty larger arguments so for those of y'all out there who might say oh my family's so dysfunctional like we always be arguing listen Sometimes I will rather get it out than to sit on it like everything is all good and then find out later that there's a problem. I mean, I know both have their drawbacks, but what would y'all rather do? Would y'all rather argue from time to time and get it out? Or would y'all rather not have any arguments for years and everybody just loves each other and gets along and gets together? But when it come out, baby, it comes out. <laughs> right? Um... But I want to applaud the Bradens for being vulnerable and open enough to share this, uh, especially Keisha, Nicole, their family specifically. And I also want to say that I hope you guys continue to be strong, have conversations and don't let social media and this show tear your family apart. Like we appreciate your vulnerability, but if any point you need to shut it down, shut it down. Don't lose your family over this. But thank you, seriously, because it was an eye opener for me, for sure. OK, so the episode picks up where it left off. And you guys remember we had left off where Joyce was saying that her and Bubba was going through their own things. And so Keisha could not be around at that time because they had stuff they had to clear up. And Jackie says that she wasn't allowed at your house. So I wasn't bringing her over there. I wasn't disrespecting y'all, but I was going to go get my niece because she was a part of the family. Now, there's a lot of cross talking going on at this time. And you guys see whose hand is up in this clip. And that's my my. I can't never remember her name. So I call her my my. Um, I wanted her to be quiet. Like I understood why she felt the need to defend her mom, like I said last week. But she started out the gate talking. Like she didn't even really give the, the conversation time to get going before she already had her hand up and was adding in, um, you know, like little just kind of, well, you didn't know that. Well, how do you know? Well, it sounds like this, but it sounds like that. Let your mom, your mom is perfectly capable of, uh, perfectly capable of explaining herself so she got her hand up and she's just like well how do we know that my dad wasn't gonna do what he what that what he was supposed to do how do we know that and her mom is saying the same thing well how do you know he wasn't gonna do it you didn't give him time and I was so glad when they cleared it up for me because I was confused I thought it had already been seven years since Bubba had gone to get Keisha or even try to have any interaction with Keisha as far as a real father daughter relationship and bringing him bringing her over into the family. And I was correct. It's, it had been seven years already. What do you mean he was probably going to do it? How do you know you didn't give him time? They gave him seven damn years. What you want to do? Give him seven more? And see if he will wait. She he will wait until she was fourteen, maybe, to bring her around. He wasn't gonna do it, Joyce. And you know that's the man you married. So stop it. So Jackie is getting very emotional, very upset. My mind is kind of she loud talking. You know she gonna ride behind her mama, rather she right or wrong, she don't care. So now Nicole is getting up. Now Jamisha is getting up. Now Jaquita is like, hold on now, ain't nobody finna disrespect my mama. And they like, oh, I'm not disrespecting your mama. Now they was going out. Look. 
they did turn towards Jackie. You know, Jackie was catching some heat, but everybody was catching some heat. Unless you watch this four or five times, each time you watch the clip, you see a different thing. Everybody was getting heated. Everybody was getting upset. But Joyce's main thing was it wasn't on me to figure out. It was on Frank to figure out. Frank was supposed to go get her. Frank needed to do what he needed to do by the girl. I couldn't force him to do it. And how do you know he wasn't going to do it? Jackie's point is he obviously wasn't going to do it because he hadn't done it up until the seven year point. And I wasn't going to quit not going to get my niece just because you got an attitude about it. So now that everybody's getting up and getting mad, Jackie is just like, F this. I didn't even want to cheat. I don't even know. She didn't say the F word, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm adding that in. But she was just like, I didn't even want to do this. You know, her drink flying everywhere. They trying to get Jackie together. And Jackie's just like, I didn't want to talk about it. I knew it was going to go this way. I knew it. And she's the most worked up. But a lot of times when you deal with these very nice and very calm people, there's a reason why they're able to do that. And that's because they like a pressure cooker my grandma real sweet but she will tell you I am a pressure cooker once you get me there it ain't no stopping me but it doesn't happen often I've actually never seen my grandma fly off the handle I'm kind of scared if she were to ever do so so <laughs> so Jackie seems like that type of person like I'm sweet I, I try to do the right thing but if you make me go there I'm going and Jackie went I mean she went she was there and I wasn't even mad finally Keisha gets up and she like shut the f up <laughs> and everybody was like oh, oh excuse her <laughs> shut the f up so they get quiet for a minute but it's still a lot of animosity because now all the cousins feel like they mamas was disrespected. You know, Jaquita, Jamisha, um, you know, Nicole. Nicole is just like, we got to stop all of this. Mama, please stop. Everybody, please stop. Like y'all doing too much. She's trying to calm everybody down. Um, my, my, I already told you, she said she rhymed behind her mama right or wrong. So we know where she at with hers. They take it inside. And the man is looking like, well, what's going on? Because now the women are coming in. Now, I want to point out that Nicole's husband left. I was a little disappointed in bro. I understand you don't want to be in the drama, but your wife is there. Where are you going? He left. He said he ain't for the caddy stuff, right? So Frank Jr. is looking around and he like, what's going on? And they say, oh, they arguing about you and what you did or what you didn't do. Frank Jr. kind of stands up and he's just like, well, I don't know what they're talking about. And, you know, I, I did what I was supposed to do. What do you mean? They weren't supposed to be getting in my business. And the other sister, the one to be crying, she looked at him and said, no, we got in your business because you wasn't doing right. Daddy would have never went out like that. So we took care of our niece because you wasn't doing it. And he said, I wasn't married. She said, well, try to get your wife to understand that. And he looks at her and says, she ain't got to understand nothing. That's not her child she ain't got to accept her boom there it is <laughs> there it is you're not gonna tell me that's not the conversation that him and Joyce been having for him to say it so freely then he started in on how he been paying child support for 18 years and I am so glad that one of the in-law husbands I don't know if it was Justin or Chris but they said that's not the same thing as spending time thank you because sometimes men don't hear it unless it comes from another man. And I don't know which one said it, but I'm thankful that they did. So the men, the in-laws, bless the in-law husbands, y'all. They trying to calm everybody down. They trying to get their wife. They trying to get the cousins. They got their arm up in front of Keisha. Keisha like, get off of me. Because <laughs> now Keisha is coming in her daddy. She telling her daddy, this is all your fault. Really, I can't even talk to you. But this really got everything to do to, with you and what you wasn't doing. I think Frank, I, I'll give him this. He probably did feel attacked because he didn't even know all of this was going on more than likely. But I don't care because <laughs> this conversation has been a long time coming he looking at Keisha like child whatever you gonna get over it this ain't got nothing to do with me I wasn't married I had two girlfriends you know I paid my child support like what would y'all what y'all want me to do Joyce is still going off and so she told when when she um looking at Frank she told Frank as he talking you shut the f up and Frank is like, what? No, 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 you shut up. I said, oh, we know who run that house. Joyce said, no, you shut up. So they grabbing Joyce. Nicole is just like, mama, please, please. Finally, Nicole says, we need to stop all of this. This 
is about Keisha. Keisha is a part of our family, whether you like it or not, and she not going nowhere. And when I saw Nicole break down in the confessionals, that's when I started crying because I really was concerned that Keisha was not going to have anybody on her side and in her corner. Now, that doesn't change what I said before when I said that Keisha was not going to find healing amongst this group of women like her sister, her mother, what is that, stepmother, her dad. When I said she wasn't going to find healing over there, I still mean that. And the reason why I mean it, even though Nicole took up for her, is because Nicole and her sister, they got their own healing to do. If that was the man that was in their household and that was the woman that raised them, who still carries a lot of resentment herself, they got their own healing to do. They can't really give Keisha the resolve that she needs. And I think Keisha was looking for some resolve through her closest family members. She's not going to get it right now. Maybe not ever. And I think she felt comforted. You know, she felt a sense of like, some approval when Nicole took up for her but the way Nicole was breaking down showed me like mm -mm. she know it's not about her right now but she still feels a lot of pain from this situation too she just know it's, it's not about her right now but eventually it's going to come out girl I felt bad for everybody but now that we got out got that out the way and I told y'all what happened now we finna get into my shady ass thoughts and there will be cussing Okay, so first of all, Monet, that's her name. Um, from the very beginning of the conversation, I needed you to be quiet. Now, I'm not going to say you got an argument started because that was going to start either way, but I needed you to be quiet. You were doing a lot of chiming in. You got you should have respected their marriage, and that was a general conversation. Well, how do you know he wasn't going? Your mom has a mouth on her. We heard it. She did not need your help. I understand you defending your mama, but because you got the going, at Aunt Jackie, then Jaquita got to going. And now everybody getting disrespectful. But I really think she should have been quiet. We didn't need her interjections. And she was interjecting from the very beginning. Number two. Um, I don't know if all of the aunts needed to be there for the conversation since it mainly had to do with Jackie. But I understand that they probably were on board for going to get Keisha. So maybe that's why they were all there. So I guess I'll, I'll, I believe that. Um, as far as Joyce, I believe that Joyce is who I said she was last week. She is a woman who, stills harbor, who still harbors resentment over the situation. Um, I didn't know that it was so, you know, going to be so apparent. But, you know, she didn't like the fact that he did that. She didn't like it. And Keisha was a constant reminder. Um, but I'm going to tell her what I would tell any other woman. If you're going to be with that man, you're going to stay with that man, you're going to lay with that man, then you accept everything he comes with. And if you're going to lay with that man knowing he is a deadbeat to one child and have more kids with them, I'm sorry, I just don't have respect for you as a woman. I just don't. And I don't care who gets hit by that. I just really don't. It's one thing if you have one child with him, but to have another one, what, just because he your husband? Your husband is a deadbeat. <laughs> <laughs> whether you don't view it that way because he not to your kids which I think he was I think he was an in-house deadbeat <laughs> emotionally anyway um but Joyce you know who you married and obviously you're still irritated by it and we can see it in the way that you handled yourself as far as Frank Jr. Bubba um, he's an embarrassment to the family legacy <laughs> by the way that he handled himself in this scene. Now, I'm pretty sure he was caught off guard. I would have loved to see what he had to say, maybe in a more calm setting. But I don't think we would have got much difference out of him. Um, I think that he has the mindset that a lot of old school men have. As long as I pay the child support, what more do you want from me? As long as I'm paying the bills, what more do you want from me? The breakdown of his oldest child, Nicole, um, showed me that there was something not only that was hurtful about this situation, but the way that Nicole talks about her dad um, makes me wonder if there was also things just that she probably would have desired more of from him in the home period emotionally. Um, I just don't think he was good to Keisha. I don't think he cared about what happened to Keisha. I think that he was mad at his sisters for even bringing her around. I think if he could have had it his way, he would have never brought her around. And I think that it's going to take Keisha a long time, if ever, to heal from that kind of rejection. Um, I think that she's trying to seek him out because he is now her only living parent, which is unfortunate. 
and I just don't think she's going to get what she needs from him. And that's one of the things that they tell you in therapy. Like when you're dealing with a parent, they have you write a letter and you have the option to read them that letter if you want. But if you read them the letter, you have to be prepared for the fact that they may not admit to it. They may not respect it. And you may never get the apology or the resolve that you're seeking. And if you're willing to take that risk, then they'll tell you to read it. If you're not willing to, then they will tell you to read it aloud and just burn it and kind of find the resolve within yourself. <sighs> it was hard to watch because you could just see it all over, specifically her and Nicole's faces. Like that's who was hurting me the most. And Aunt Charlotte, for some reason, she seemed to be very devastated. Now, <clears throat> the auntie that be crying, she is the one who walked up to Frank and told him, like, you was wrong for that. And do y'all know Frank had the nerve to look at her and say, you ain't got no kids. You should have had some kids. That's what I'm saying right there. It's hard to feel like he was ambushed when he got stuff like this to say. And honey, she better than me because I hope that in my upper upper years, I hope I'm still a sharpshooter with this tongue because I'm shady. Honey, I would have looked at Frank and said, you know what? You're absolutely right. But see, I know better than to birth some kids out of my coochie to this ghetto ass housing project called Earth because the world is tough enough. So I practiced some coochie discipline and didn't pop them out. Unlike your wayward dick with your ghetto twin creating ass. I would have read Frank so good that the rest of them teeth that he don't got would have came tumbling out his goddamn mouth talking to me talking about I should have had some kids you shouldn't have had none God should have locked your Avon's deference up tight <laughs> is that what them glands and stuff called he should have locked yours up tight you shouldn't have been allowed to reproduce I really I heard somebody say today to have children there should be a test a IQ test and um, a skills test and if you can't pass you don't get to have no kids I bet you we would get a totally different attitude from some of these parents if that were the case. But you didn't practice no dick discipline. And one of them just happened to stay with you. And you see next week, Joyce talking about, well, he had a girlfriend and he went and laid with some other woman. Listen, Joyce, you can word it however you want. You may have been his woman, but he saw fit to raw dog another one. So what are we talking about here? <sighs> I'm tired. I'm really, really tired and I, I don't like, I don't like people that don't do right by their kids. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. And I understand that back then, maybe they didn't have the tools and the resources and all that other stuff. What's the excuse now? What's the excuse now? Now that you see the fallout, now that you know you're wrong, enough people done told you. Now that you grown as hell, these people over 60. What's the problem with saying, you know, I thought I was right then, but I was wrong. I'm sorry to do that to you. How can I fix it? But it'd be so much ego that nobody can admit they wrong or because you were hurt back in the day, you can't admit you wrong. And let me tell you something about my mama. I love my mama. I'm riding behind her. But I tell my mom, I ask my mama all the time, how does it feel to give birth to your biggest op? Because when my mama wrong, I'm telling her. When she think I'm going to take her side, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I will love her and I will support her until they put me in a grave. But I will not agree with her if she's wrong. And she knows that. And some days she appreciate it. A lot of days she don't. <laughs> but um, they ended up having prayer. I said, child, y'all going to need a lot more than prayer. But what did y'all think about the situation? Did it bring you to tears? Um, it brought me to tears. It brought me to tears. Um, rejection is really hard. Rejection from a parent is even worse. And I feel I'm going to pray for people tonight. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray really hard for people tonight. I hope for all of you who've ever been rejected by a parent, I hope you find healing. I hope you go on a journey to discover healing. Um, I feel sorry for people who have dysfunctional parents who reject them often. But because that's the only parent they have, they keep going back. I hate it. I hate it. It's about to make me cry now um, because despite anything, I always know I have one parent who accepts me flaws and all. And, you know, despite some of her ways, um, she she does try to be good to me and, and admit when it's not always right. 
And that's, that's that goes a long way. Admitting that you're not right about some stuff. You don't know the healing that that does for your child, for real. But who child? Let's move on to something else. The rest of the episode was pretty mild. We saw, we saw Keisha going out with Caramel. They recap all the events. And one of the things that Keisha said that made me kind of sad was um, sometimes she wished she wouldn't have known them at all. Like nobody would have brought her around. And then maybe she would be better off, which I think about that sometimes, though. Like, would it be worse to feel the rejection from a parent you do know or just never know the parent at all? Mm. I felt bad for her, though. But um, she did say she felt good to have Nicole look out for her. And maybe this will be the start to their sisterhood. Like, you know, things happen for a reason. So um, she said they called to check on each other after. Maybe this will be the start to a shift in their relationship. Side note, did y'all hear um did y'all hear Keisha when she said she got to heal because she got to be the best mother she can for her son? I said, "Son, how do I keep missing children in this family?" Because Keisha also was given no kids. What a son that is he with his father? I was so I was confusion. He looks to be a preteen, so he might be living with his daddy now, but I was just like the best mother for your son. Hmm, boy, y'all know. Y'all know y'all be having me missing these kids on this show. But yeah, she she's a mother too. Um, then we see Nicole and the little sister meeting up. They are going to, you know, they're getting this luxury brand going. So they're meeting up with one of their clients. I'm guessing this is his assistant, though, that they met up with. Um, he's interested. He's looking for a broker to sell his home for $4 million. Um, they're looking around the home. It's a beautiful home. A um, lot of customs to it. Huge. And, um, you know, they want they don't want to just select any old body. They want a really good broker. So Nicole does her selling points that they are one of the largest. Did you say the largest independent black brokerages in the area? Um, you know, their family, you know how they sell it or whatever. He uh, plugged his business, you know, gave him a T-shirt. <laughs> and then after the fact, her and her sister just kind of talk about what happened at the dinner. And her sister says she don't appreciate Jaquita telling her that she needed to stay out of it, which she did. Um, but she wasn't trying to be disrespectful, but she wasn't going to let nobody disrespect her mama again y'all know how i feel about her so whatever um nicole says that she was really hurt by the whole situation she understood where people was coming from but a lot of people don't understand what her herself and her younger sister went through they think we didn't know what was going on but we did know what was going on and we were really hurt by some of the stuff that happened as well in our home but at the time you know like i said before i think nicole knew that at the time it didn't have nothing to do with them. This was about Keisha's healing. And I don't think the little sister is getting that. Nobody's really trying to gang up on your mama as much as we trying to get Keisha what she need. You get what I'm saying? So I think Nicole kind of gets it. Sister, maybe not so much. And later we see Nicole. Now, this probably was before they showed the property, but we see Nicole going on like a family fun day with uh, her family, her child that y'all... <laughs> Y'all know I forgot about Nicole having a child, too. Um, and that's when she lets her husband know, like, with everything that was going on, she normally is not one to break down and cry. Um, but she is very emotional about her family. She loves her family. She loves when everybody get along. Like, she don't like there to be discord within the family. And, you know, she just, she can't even explain how much she just wants everybody to love on each other. And I get it, Nicole, girl. You ain't got to explain. It's like the hardest ones in the family, the ones that you think is like, no nonsense in, in hardcore be the, the ones with the softest hearts. So believe me, baby, I know. Um, but she tells her husband, like, out of all the times I really, really needed you there, I needed you there. And then y'all know he's sitting there talking about, I know, man, I felt bad. And then I had took some medicine. So when you got home, I was asleep. Uh, excuse me, Negro, Nigarachi, get it together. <laughs> You listen, don't do that no more. I understand it got caddy in there, but don't do that no more. You know, your wife is there. It's stuff going on. Make sure your wife good at least before you, you know, waltz your ass up out of there. And this is another reason. Next week, they're going to talk about that adoption. They're not ready to adopt. This, this, this ain't even right. Y'all don't need to do that. Now, after this scene, we see Nicole meeting with Jamisha and Jaquita because 
again, they got to talk about what happened and how they felt about the situation. Um, but they also want to talk about this deal. All right. Now, Jerisha asked Nicole, who you riding with? Is you with us or is you a op? Because you was making some side deals at the rodeo and I want to know what's going on. Nicole is more so just, she not on G2's side. She not on G1's side. She on Granny's side. Whatever Granny want to do is what she's worried about. She don't want to stress her grandma out. And I understand, like I'm on her side. Whatever ultimately she wants to do, that's what's got to be done. And so Jermisha is just like, yeah, but when we, when it's time to present this to the G2s, I'm going to need you to be on my team. I don't need you to be on no other teams. So Nicole is just like, yeah, I'm there. I I'm, on, I'm on your team. <laughs> and Jamisha, Jamisha was just kind of looking. And Nicole was like, I was always on y'all team. No, you wasn't. <laughs> but now we're going to do this presentation to Granny and the G2s. Wait, Granny and the G1s. Oh my goodness, Grandma Oscarine came through there looking like a stunner. Oh, she was so pretty. I bet you she done had that little overcoat for years. I just, I hope I look good in my 80s. I hope I look good. I hope I'm still walking around. First of all, I, I, I don't really hope to be here that long. But if I'm here, I want to look good. I want to be in good health. So she show up looking good, child. She got her spring colors on too. Everybody else shows up. And I just want to say one of the things that I really like about this family is that everybody dresses according to what looks good on them. You know, I hate to see women that's like heavy chested, big old butts or whatever, and they wearing things that don't look good on them. Like it's nothing, it's not that it's wrong to wear, it's just that it doesn't fit their body appropriately. Jaquita, I know this is very top heavy, always looks good. Jermisha is a little fuller around the middle. You know, she always looks good. Um, Nicole, Nicole has a nice body. She seems to be tall, but I can't really tell. Again, always looks good. Aunties always look good. Grandma always look good. Everybody always just looks good. I love it. I love it. I love to see women taking care of themselves. So anyway, they present the options to the G1s and Basically, don't give me the lion on the math, but the Shelton group, Jamisha starts it off with the legacy part because you remember that's what they told her to do. So she pitched the legacy and the land and the importance of family. And then Shelton came in with the numbers and the um, what actual the, the homes are going to look like and the creation that they're going to build on top of the land. So essentially, it's about 18 homes. Um, you know, he tells the name of the neighborhood. He says that there is a buyout option, but there's also a rental option that is going to produce income, but it's over a period of five years. But during that period of five years, it's going to produce a significant amount of income. So auntie, I feel like her name started with a D, the one to be crying, the one in the pink. She going to whisper over to Grandma Oscarine, do you like the renting option or, or the sale? And I said, don't be asking questions during the presentation. The presentation not over. But Granny says she really prefer the selling option. So I guess we have yet to see where this is going to go next. I don't know. Do oh, my bad, y'all. Somebody called me right when I was at the end of the review. But uh, do y'all got enough money to buy Granny out? Like maybe y'all can buy her out and then y'all could do what y'all want on the property. Y'all got the 800 thou or however much she trying to sell it for. Y'all got the thou wow? Y'all got the money? Mm. But Granny seemed to like the sale option more. So we'll see what happens uh, with the land. What did you guys think about the episode? Was y'all crying? Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to see y'all for the next one. Bye.